there, everybody. It's Mike Delisio. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Whale to Look, coming from publisher Oink Games and designer Jun Sasaki and Bruno Fiduti. This is a game where you are playing as tour operators and you're trying to bring tourists around that are wanting to get a look at whales and orcas. And that's going to be how you win the game. Let's head over to the table. I'll show you how the game plays. Then we'll come back here and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, here we see Whale to Look, all set up for a three-player game. In the main player area, you've got these six area cards that are right here, and the numbers that are on those cards really only become applicable if there is a tie for most or least fish, and I'll explain what that means in a moment, but otherwise, the numbers don't really have any relevance. These cards are all surrounded by these cards, which are fish cards. So all of these cards were randomly shuffled and dealt out. And so each of these fish cards are gonna have a particular number of fish. And what you're gonna be evaluating at the end of the round is how many fish are surrounding each of these area cards. In the game, you are playing as tour operators and you are taking tourists that are out trying to find orcas and whales. They want to see those magnificent creatures. And so what you're trying to do is do some investigation using these investigation markers to figure out where the fish are and put your boat strategically in areas where the whale and the orca are going to appear. The whale, which is this white piece here, is gonna show up where the total number of adjacent fish cards are the largest. So in whichever one of these area cards has the largest total, that's where the whale's gonna show up. The orca is gonna show up in the place where the fish are the least. So in the area around one of these area cards that has the least amount of fish, that's where the orca is gonna show up. And the, the Tourists are happy to see either. So what you're gonna be doing is trying to predict, maybe do a little bit, of little bit of bluffing and place your boats in the places where those two animals are gonna show up. All right, everybody has their starting kind of materials. And you can see here in the three colors, we've got our docks, we've got our three boats that have one, two, or three tourists in them. So this is the one tourist boat, all right. We've got a two and a three. Everyone's got their five investigation markers. They've got an anchor and they've got a radar token. All right, so we also have some point tokens over here and another little deck of cards I'll talk about in a moment. On your turn, you're only gonna do one of two things. You're either going to investigate and move, which is what you're gonna do most often, or you're gonna finish for the round, okay? And so let me just talk a little bit about how that works. When you investigate and move, which is gonna be the thing you do the most, you take one of your investigation markers and you place it next to one of these fish cards because you're trying to ascertain some information on how many fish are where. So let's say that the purple player puts their investigation marker right there. They and only they take a look at the card and they get some information. Okay, well this tells me that there's one fish that's gonna show up here, all right? so. If you do an investigation action, you have to move your boats, one of your three boats. When they're all at the dock, the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to move from the dock to one of these area cards. It does not have to be a card that's near where you placed your investigation mark. As a matter of fact, I might wanna go right here, okay? The rules for these area spots are as follows. You can only ever have as many boats on a spot as there are number of players. So each of these area cards can only have a maximum of three boats on them at any one time. And one player can have multiple boats there. I could potentially have all three of my boats there if I really, really wanted that spot course, I might attract the attention of the other tour operators, okay? So that's an investigate and move. Another player, the yellow player might be next. They say, well, I don't really care about that right now. Let's look and see what's over here. It's a one. Oh, okay. Well, maybe they think, well, this is potentially a spot where a low amount of fish are going to be. I'll place one of my boats right there, but I'll put my number one boat. That's a safe bet. The other way that you can move, if you're not going to move a boat from the dock uh, onto the, one of the areas is you can move a pre-existing boat orthogonally one space, but you cannot cross the fish uh, uh, card. So I could go here to here, here to here, but I could not go here to there. You can't cross over one of those cards. All right. Again, remembering that there are some limitations as to, to the number of ships as well. Another thing that you could do on your turn, anytime on your turn, if you're doing an investigator move, is let's say this green player He's gonna do a little investigation. They're gonna look right here. They're gonna say, 
Huh, three fish. Interesting, interesting. But I'd really like to know what is right here. They can flip over this radar token, everyone has one of them, and just flip a token or flip a card face up. Now, everyone has that information, but uh, it's a way that you can potentially glean more information. And so every player has one of those that they can use per round. So they, they know this is a five, they know this is a three. They're like, hey, this is a pretty juicy potential spot right here. I'm gonna put my three boat here, and you might see why they would choose their three boat. And I did a move. I'm also gonna lay my anchor down, okay? I'll explain what that means in a moment. Once a boat has an anchor on it, you cannot move that boat again. So that boat is gonna be there for the rest of the round. And also, you can only have one anchor per uh, area card, so no other boat could have an anchor on that particular spot, okay? Players are gonna to continue to do this, placing out their investigation mar markers, potentially laying their uh, anchors down, potentially flipping over the radar cards or radar things to get more information. And they're gonna to continue to do this until every player has placed out all of their boats or are unable to move. At that point, they'll flip over their dock card saying that they're finished. When all three players have finished, you're gonna evaluate the scoring for the round. Let me just kind of jump forward and show you what that might look like. All right, so let's say at the end of the first round after every player has declared that they're finished, this is how things look. They've put out their investigation markers they want to, each of the boats that, that have wanted to put out an anchor could, making sure that there was only one per, per uh, spot. There's a correct number of boats per each area. There's no more than three on each of those. You would then flip over all of the fish cards, okay? And again, what you're trying to do is you're evaluating the value of the spots around each of the area cards. All right, so just flipping the rest of these over. Let's say that this is how it shakes out at the end of round one. And so looking at the fish cards, we can see that this particular area has a value of 11, this has a value of nine, this has a value of seven, this has a value of 10, this has a value of 12, and this has a value of eight. So in this circumstance, 12 is our high value and seven is our low value. If ever there's a tie, that's where these, the numbers on these area cards would come into place. If it's a tie for the highest, the tie would be broken by the highest value card. If it's a tie for the lowest, it would be broken by the lowest value area card, but that's not the case here. All right, so in the highest spot, the area where the, the fish is gonna be the biggest, that's where the whale is gonna appear, and that is gonna be right here. So these three happy tourists got to see a whale. The point values are gonna be based on the number of people in the boat. So in this case, we've got three people, that's three points. However, they set their anchor there because they were so confident in this spot, they get a bonus two points. So the purple player gets five points for that placement right there. This is the area where the orca is gonna show up with the smallest amount of fish. In this case, the yellow player is going to get two points. There are two people in the boat. They did not uh, place their anchor, so they don't get any bonus points there. And the green player, unfortunately, didn't get to see any of the uh, beautiful marine life. They might have seen a couple of fish, but that's not getting them any points. They want the whale or the, or, or the orca, okay? so. That would be how the first round is gonna go. The second round, what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically reshuffle everything. All of the pieces are gonna come back to their docks. You'll kind of reset how things work. And then what you're gonna do is you are gonna shuffle up these trending cards and you're gonna flip over one of them for your second and final round. This is gonna have some little variation to the scoring that will affect that second round. And so let's just see kind of what these are. So here you've got orca watching season, and you can look at your little thing here. Any player that placed a boat where the orca appears is gonna get a bonus three points. So that's a, gonna incentivize you to go for that orca. You've got, oops, let me turn this around, whale watching season. Whale watching season says any player that placed a boat in the area where the whale appear, it gets uh, plus two points for each of their boats in the area. So you could get multiples if you have multiple boats there. Then you've got whale and orca season, which is if you've got Bo a player that placed boats in both areas is gonna get plus four points. And then the last one is fishing season. And the way fishing season works is that everyone, if this particular trending tar card comes up, they're gonna replace their single tourist uh, boats 
with this fisherman, okay? So you would just basically remove your single tourist and replace it with one of these fishermen. And the way these are gonna work is that they're gonna give you three points if they end up in an area where the orca or the whale is not. And you can only have one of these fishermen per area card, all right? So that's really the only uh, thing that'll change is you'll turn over one of these trending cards. It'll just slightly change up the scoring for the second round. You're gonna do the same exact thing in the second round and whoever has the most points after two rounds is gonna win whale to look. If there is a tie, the player that took their turn last in round two will win. All right, let's head back over and I'll let you know what I think. All right, so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea on how the game Whale to Look is played. And uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is that this is a game coming from Oink Games, the Japanese publisher who has increasingly over the years become a relatively large presence in the hobby board gaming sphere. Uh, they, they come to many of the conventions around the world. I see them at Gen Con regularly. I saw them at Essen. And uh, clearly they have a presence in Japan as well. Um, but this is the first time that uh, the designer Bruno Fiduti, who is maybe most well known for Citadels, has come aboard for a co-design with Jun Sasaki, who has been a part of many of the Oink games. And so I find that uh, you know compelling in, in just in that uh, uh, that fact alone. Let's talk about this game. Um, First thing I want to do is talk about the components. It's something that oftentimes gets brought up with Oint Games because one of the things that they are known for as a publisher are small boxes. Their typical box size is very, very small, and, and this particular game fits in that category. It's in their small box. They have had some double-sized boxes, but even those uh, are, are would be considered small with uh, comparison to most hobby board games. So. In that, uh, with that reality of these small boxes, oftentimes they are putting in components that uh, are, are maybe a little bit difficult to deal with because you know you, you have to get them all to fit into this box, and oftentimes what is in the, the size of the box doesn't belie what you're going to see out on the table in front of you. A lot of times these games will take up a massive amount of table space. Um, Whale to Look does not have that issue for the most part. I feel like uh, you know. The, the components are, for the most part, very, very good. Uh, the little bit of negative I have are, are, are twofold. Number one is that I wish they had made the color of the radar tokens not yellow, because that is a player color. And that can be a little bit confusing in your first game, uh, just because you're thinking, is this only for the yellow players? No, that, that radar token is the same color for everybody. That I kind of wish they had done a little bit differently. And the other thing is that those um, investigation tokens can be a little bit hard to deal with, a little bit fiddly. Uh, I know that word gets used a lot, but I think that this is a textbook definition of fiddly and that they're a little bit small and sometimes can be, can be hard to manage, but not anything that is uh, terribly, terribly concerning. I just bring that up because for the most part, I think that the components in this game are terrific. I absolutely adore the, uh, the little uh, tourists going in the boats, and yeah, that could be a little bit tricky to, to deal with too, and some of them stick in better than others, but for the most part, they work great. Uh, the look of the uh, of the game, it's charming, it is inviting, you see it on the table, and it is just gonna have that kind of cute factor that's gonna draw a lot of people in, I think. Uh, it, it's a looker on the table, and I feel like all of the components are functional. Some of them are a little bit easier to deal with than others. Again, those uh, the the investigation token is a little bit tricky. But otherwise, the art, the aesthetic, the components, very very good. No complaints there. One other thing I do want to mention is, uh, are the rules. You know, Oink has been putting out games for uh, quite a period of time. I found some of the rule books, especially in earlier Oink games that were released a number of years ago, a little bit tricky uh, to deal with. A lot of times they would use um, flow charts in their, in their rules, and sometimes those were clearer than, than others for me. I did find that the rules in Whale to Look were very clear. This is a game that, uh, by its nature, thematically, it helps you to learn the rule set. Everything seems to make sense, right? You're, you're taking tourists around, they wanna see these beautiful majestic animals. And once you understand what are the triggers to get those animals out, it makes very, you know, very intuitive sense. 
I want to be either in the spot where there are the most fish or the spot where there are the least fish. Very simple. What you're doing is very simple. You're investigating and moving or you're ending. You know, you're saying that's it for this round. That's it. But within that very simple, elegant rule set is a surprisingly deep game I found. And, and it really that came out through repeat plays. What, what I saw right away in my first couple of plays were the, 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 the kind of the fun of the bluffing. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, maybe put a, a ship over here or a boat over here and kind of draw people over there and then book out of there and, and go to where I really want to go. Those little types of things are, are fun and, and kind of getting in the heads of the players around you. Those are, you, you can see those in the first couple of plays. What began to become a little bit more apparent to me as I played the game more is just how important the movement is in this game because there are some real limitations to your movement and being able to utilize the amount of times that you're able to move your ship is crucial. Um, you, you, you know, if you feel very confident about a spot, you can just put your, as long as it's not filled, you can put your ship right there and put your anchor down. You're not moving, right? That's where you're going to be, but you're also giving potentially a lot of information to the other players uh, that can also benefit from that. And being that you can have multiple ships of your own on a spot, it might behoove you to allow you to get more of your ships there if you're really, really confident that that spot is going to be a good scoring spot. So the, the, the subtleties around when you kind of tip your hand and, and, you know, make it very clear that you are interested in this spot is a little bit more subtle than I saw in the first game or two. And, and kind of the limitations of how you move, where you can move, and how often you can move is actually a pretty big part of this game that, again, really only revealed itself to me after multiple plays. Um, the core gameplay is very satisfying, very simple to understand, uh, but, but again, it, it just, it has me coming back. This is a game that I find myself just wanting to continue to play more and more. Even though it's a very simple game, there's not a lot of rules depth to it, there's a lot of repeat plays here. Even just with those little trending cards that change up the second round, that can really make a big difference as well too. Um, but the bottom line is that the game has that it factor that can be very hard to, to kind of describe where everything comes together for me as a gamer. Simple to teach and learn plays in a very reasonable amount of time where it feels filler length and it feels filler rules wise, but the kind of enjoyment I get is more than I get out of a typical filler. So I would hesitate to necessarily call this a filler. I mean, I think it, it has uh, many of those hallmarks, but it, it really has a much more satisfying feeling to, uh, to it for me than a typical filler game does. Oink games have been a little bit hit or miss for me as a gamer, where they've put out a lot of games, and some of them I think are really fun. You know, right off the get-go, Scout. You know, I was like, wow, this is this game has something here. The first time I played it, I really liked it, even though, you know, that was one that Oink kind of, you know, uh, took over. It didn't start with them. Deep Sea Adventure, I knew I liked that game right away. Some of their other games have been um, appealing to me for some kind of a gimmick or a hook. Maybe it's a, a component issue like in Hey Yo, where it's got that little beatbox machine, you know, where, where that kind of gets me. But this is a game that I feel like by its design is gonna be one that's gonna keep people coming back for more. This isn't a game that's gonna get by on a hook or a gimmick. Sure, it looks cute, it looks adorable, it has very nice components, a nice table presence, and a theme that I think a lot of people can get behind. But there's a really solid game behind this too, with a little bit of deduction, a little bit of bluffing, a little bit of movement and spatial element, all of it comes together in a very, very satisfying package. I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised because I didn't really know what to expect coming into this one because only games, as I said, have been hit or miss. I'm giving Whale to Look an 8.5, a seal of excellence. I really, really like this game a lot. I see myself coming back to it uh, over and over again because it's one that I feel like plays good at, at all player counts. That's also important. In a two-player game, the only difference really is that you got two radar uh, tokens instead of one, but otherwise it plays good across the player counts. It, uh, you know, it does so many things that I like in games right now that I mentioned previously. So there you go, an 8.5 for me for Whale to Look. That's gonna do it for me. This is Mike Delisio signing off 
from the Dice Tower Midwest Annex.